And we're back. We're doing the Constitution line by line. I'm Don Frazier, and my smiling, laughing colleague is Paul Fabrizio. That's because I'm excited to be here. Are you excited to be here? Because we're on lucky number seven this time, yes, the we Seventh are. Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Paul teaches political science, I teach history, and um, we're coming at it from related but different angles. <laughs> at least I think yes, we are. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes we agree. Sometimes, sometimes we disagree. Sometimes his Cali shows. Just saying. <laughs> Little. Sometimes his Texan shows. <laughs> okay, but the problem is we're on your home turf, so. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. Oh, well, you're an import. <laughs> <laughs> Which most Texans are nowadays. Well, yeah. most Texans have been historically. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, are we ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay, Amendment 7, in suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. So, what do you know about the common law? Uh, I know very little. The common law, of course, is the body of law that goes back to England. Sure. And so. It's the assumed rules of the society at that time. Now, right. it's been modified over time. Right. But there is such a thing as common law that, you know, these are things that just should be self evident. Right. And so that's what we got. We got, in, in this thing, we got probably the most important thing is that the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. Yeah, for so, all, all, all cases over... Case, all civil cases. Over 20 bucks. No, that's in... Uh, did I say that? Yes, I'm sorry. I did say that. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. over 20 bucks. That. Adjusted for inflation, we could say that that's probably $500 now, but... Um, actually, <laughs> it's... I, I, I was doing some research on that. I was really curious about this. Does this $20 thing still hold? Yeah. And there's an assumption by a lot of people that inflation takes over. Sure. So what was $20 back at the writing of this now would be, as you said, 500 I saw some other scholar who said it's $300. Okay. But either way, there's another – belief that says no the twenty dollars still holds then that means we should have thirty thousand representatives or whatever the number was <laughs> and it turns out there really hasn't been any big cases about this that have gone before the supreme court about this particular about that amendment. particular clause of the amendment the the most important thing is what it says is that in civil cases you have a right to a trial by jury that's over time, how we look at this, you have a right to trial by jury. So that's the second time we've heard about trial by jury. We have. The first was, of course, in the previous amendment. Criminal cases. Criminal cases. But this also says it now applies to civil cases. So we believe in trial by jury. Yes. And we believe in common law. Yes. And these are not unrelated. Okay. Explain what you mean. Well, I mean, the common law is essentially the body of law that the entire society Accepts. Accepts. It's sort of like the unwritten rules yeah. in which... The have. context yeah. of that there's, society. There's a judge, there's a jury, you have to go and you get a chance to... Uh, the state has a chance to prove your guilt and you have a chance to argue against it. Well, and one would assume that the jury mm -hmm. would have in its noggin, mm -hmm. collective noggin, this idea of common law. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they're related. Okay. You can't unthink common law. It's kind of hardwired. It's the firmware <laughs> that we're kind of inculcated with. And that's actually one of the challenges to an immigrant nation like the United States mm -hmm. is how do you get everybody on board with the common law? Because what is common law in old England is not common law in Somalia. And... What is common law in old England is not necessarily common law in the United States anymore either. That's correct. And, and I'd say that that's a dynamic right. process that we go through. And, you know, some of the critics of um, essentially open borders is the argument mm -hmm. that uh, uh, unlimited, mm -hmm. unrestrained immigration is that the United States will become a third world country. 
is all these people bring in their common law mm-hmm. and essentially dilute what had been the traditional common law in the United States. And, of course, that's something that the United States has been dealing with as the fact we've had waves of immigrants coming in yeah, all absolutely. over time. And, and everybody's been <laughs> wringing their hands with every wave. <laughs> I mean, the new immigration of the late 19th and early 20th century, I mean, all those Italians coming over. My my family. <laughs> and, you know, my wife's family, all those Irish coming over. You know, mm-hmm. Irish need not apply. Yeah. Yeah, so we do a lot of hand-wringing, but this particular amendment, says that trial by jury is something we're not going to mess with. Right, right. So for civil cases as well as criminal cases from the previous amendments, you have a right to a trial by jury. And that's an important thing. It can't be decided by a judge in a single in a court unless that is what parties agree to. And it's under 20 bucks. Right. And so th- we're talking, of course, about federal cases. Yeah. Okay, so state law is different. And by the way, we haven't really talked about this before, but the previous six amendments to the Constitution have, for the most part, been added to the state constitutions. Okay? Glued on. Glued on, if you will. This amendment has never been added on to the state constitutions. Interesting. So state constitutions regarding civil cases, state constitutions regarding how much you're suing for, for example, they can do what they want. This has never been added to the state constitutions. And that process of adding to the state constitutions is done through the Supreme Court, Supreme Court decisions that's saying this is how it will be. So what did this apply to? If it's just civil civil suits that about federal <laughs> issues? Yeah, it's about federal issues, and, and it first came about, and it mostly was related in the early days to maritime law. Yeah, well, that would make sense. Yeah. Because that's federal jurisdiction. As soon as you slip out of port and get a couple of miles behind you, there you are. Yeah, exactly. So, therefore, each state would develop its own, and the Supreme Court has never come along and said, you have to abide by this, the Seventh Amendment in your state constitution. just hasn't happened yet. Hmm. So and you, there hasn't been a big push to do it either. And it's just sort of like we've got this system of state laws and federal laws, and we're okay with the way it is right now. Yeah. So. yeah. It, one of the things that we rarely think of is what happens when Americans move into a foreign country. Because a lot of times they get to missing some of these mm-hmm. amendments oh, and some of yeah. these constitutional protections. I know historically when the Americans immigrated into Spanish, then Mexican, Texas, that they found the way that they applied jurisprudence to be somewhat alien to what they were used to. So that was actually one of the contributing factors to the upset. Where's my attorney? Yeah, where's my attorney? Where's my jury? Yeah. Wait a (laughs) second. second. Isn't the judge your (laughs) brother-in-law? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So anyway, this one... Don't want to make too big a deal out of it. Sure. It only applies to the federal government. doesn't apply to the state. So this is the first time we've seen that. And so that stands out. And the other thing is you have a right to a trial by jury if you're involved in a civil suit Yeah. at the federal level. Done and done. Okay. All right. So that's our line. We'll pick up Amendment 8 Ooh. next time.